started shooting children and the teachers. We just hear all kinds of gunshots going off, like nonstop, like constantly gunshots. A nightmare in Texas still unfolding. 19 children and two teachers dead inside one elementary school classroom. What happened uh, in Uvalde is a horrific tragedy uh, that cannot be tolerated. Uh, in the state of Texas. We're learning about the victims who were just two days from finishing the school year. We're a small community and we will need your prayers to get us through this. And police trying to figure out the shooter's motive. Did you notice that he was growing disturbed? Was he becoming no. upset? Was he, he, he was very quiet. Revealing he bought a gun just days after turning 18. We have to act and don't tell me we can't have an impact on this carnage. Once again, we are a nation grieving after another mass shooting tragedy. 19 children and two teachers killed in Uvalde, Texas, after a gunman who also died opened fire inside an elementary school classroom. And we are bringing you the latest on the shooting today at 11. I'm Nicole Brady. We are awaiting an update from officials in about a half an hour and we'll bring you a special report at that point. Here's what we know right now. The shooting happened just two days before summer break and all of the victims were in one fourth grade classroom. ABC is reporting at least four of the children were 10 years old and at least four people are still in the hospital their ages range from 9 to 66 years old. The gunman barricaded himself inside that classroom and started shooting. He was killed by a Border Patrol agent who rushed into the school. Police are releasing new details about the gunman. Morgan Norwood reports on what happened in the days leading up to the shooting. Gripped with grief and worry, families in Uvalde, Texas, struggling to make sense of the massacre at Robb Elementary School. Overnight, distraught families pacing the grounds at the Civic Center, waiting hours to identify their children. The attack unfolded Tuesday morning shortly after 1130. According to law enforcement, the suspect, 18-year-old Salvador Ramos, shot his grandmother in the head and then crashed his car outside of the school. That triggered a response from a Uvalde school police officer who was then shot by the suspect. Authorities say the suspect, who was wearing body armor and armed with an AR-15 style rifle, then went into the school, into a classroom, barricaded himself inside, and opened fire on teachers, students, and responding officers. We just hear all kinds of gunshots going off, like nonstop. Ramos fatally shot by police. Two officers were injured in that shootout. Both expected to survive, as is Ramos's grandmother. Did you notice that? He was growing disturbed. Was he becoming no. upset? Was he, he, he was very quiet. He, he was very quiet. Authorities say the suspect legally purchased the two rifles six days after his 18th birthday, which was two days before the shooting. He also purchased body armor. Investigators are also trying to piece together a motive and are combing through social media posts allegedly made by the shooter. President Biden has ordered all flags on federal land to fly at half staff in honor of the victims. He also expressed anger over the senseless violence. I had hoped when I became president I would not have to do this again. Another massacre. How many scores of little children who witnessed what happened see their friends die as if they're on a battlefield, for God's sake. They'll live with it the rest of their lives. And here in Uvalde, grief counselors on hand to talk with students and parents and with several still in the hospital. There are calls for emergency blood donations. Morgan Norwood, ABC News, Uvalde, Texas. And flags are flying at half staff across Colorado, at our state capitol and in the nation's capital, Washington, D.C. In remembrance of the victims, they will stay at half staff until sunset on Saturday. We are learning more about the victims killed in the shooting. 19 of them, of course, children and two were teachers at Robb Elementary. 10 year old Javier Lopez was one of the students in that classroom. According to his cousin, uh, Javier's mom was at an award ceremony for him just a few hours before the shooting and had no idea she would not never see him after that again. His grandmother spoke to ABC News. So it's so hard you send your kids to school and thinking they're gonna make it back home and they're not. Fourth grade special education teacher Eva Mireles was with the Uvalde School District for 17 years. Audrey Garcia's daughter Gabby was a former student of hers. That kind of teaching, that hands-on, um, doing whatever she could do 
to help Gabby. I mean, she, that's the kind of thing she did every day. And we are still learning to waiting to learn the names and more about these other uh, young, precious children. Uh, we are starting to see some of their pictures. Some of them are believed to be the children of Customs and Border Patrol agents in the area. The shooting marks the deadliest one on a school campus since the Sandy Hook Elementary tragedy almost 10 years ago. Since Sandy Hook, Congress has tried and failed many times to pass gun control legislation. The House recently passed bills that would expand the review period for gun buyers and require background checks for sales at gun shows. But those bills are expected to be defeated by the Senate. What are we doing? Why do you spend all this time running for the United States Senate? Why do you go through all the hassle of getting this job, of putting yourself in a position of authority, if your answer is that as this slaughter increases, as our kids run for their lives, we do nothing? Some Republicans say restricting weapons is not the answer. That doesn't work. It's not effective. It doesn't prevent crime. We know what does prevent crime, which is going after felons and fugitives and those with serious mental illness arresting them, prosecuting them when they try to illegally buy firearms. 19 states, including Colorado, have red flag laws, which can lead to the removal of weapons from individuals deemed to be a threat to themselves or others. And looking at some other laws here in Colorado, there's also an Office of Gun Violence Prevention designed to find solutions to ending gun violence. Gun owners here are also required to safely store their guns or face a $1,000 fine. And people found guilty of violent misdemeanors are not allowed to buy guns for five years after the convictions. Colorado, Colorado leaders have spent decades trying to find other solutions. And a group in Lakewood says one of the most important things we can do right now is speak up if we see anything. Denver 7's Veronica Costa reports. That's what this group is trying to help with. This Lakewood group specializes in targeted violence prevention. Mass shootings happen so frequently in the U.S. The members of this group have dedicated their lives to trying to stop them. Nicoletti Flatter Associates, this is a Lakewood-based group, is able to do this with the help of federal grant money. Dr. Rachel Nielsen and other members of the group, they've been able to teach first responders, educators, and mental health providers across Colorado about the warning signs that oftentimes come before one of these violent attacks. The idea that if we build awareness and competency, um, so awareness among everyone, competency among professionals about how to deal with these issues, when you see warning signs, when you do need to involve someone um, beyond yourself, um, then basically you build uh, a system that is sustainable, you know, all educators, mental health providers, law enforcement would have training in this. Our state has also used other tools for years now, tools like the Safe to Tell program, a program that allows students, parents, even community members to report threats and concerns completely anonymously. In an interview with Denver 7 Attorney General, Attorney General rather, Phil Weiser, urged that programs like this continued to be used. What we've learned again and again is when someone makes a threat that they're gonna go in to a school and shoot people, we can't ignore it. And just yesterday, Attorney General Weiser was at a Golden High School speaking with students and staff about a new program encouraging students seek out mental health resources. He said his office plans to continue encouraging those kinds of programs and hope they help prevent acts of violence. In studio, I'm Veronica Acosta, Denver 7. Hmm. We're all processing what happened in different ways, and for parents with young children, this may be hitting especially close to home. So we spoke with a doctor, Mickey Burns, from Judy's House, an organization in Colorado that helps grieving children and families. We can talk about that in circles where we can express our fears in an open and genuine way so that when we sit down with our children and, and share what we're feeling, we can put it in a way that still lets them know that we're going to be able to protect them and be there and care for them and really help create safety in our community here. Burns said people may be feeling fear or anger as well. She says a few ways to channel those emotions are by making a positive impact, whether by donating to a group, a giving back by volunteering or becoming an activist to make change. It's been 23 years since Colorado became the national focal point for the Columbine shooting. Former Columbine principal Frank DeAngelis has spent his life since then helping so many other communities through similar tragedies. 
if I can give a piece of advice to the people, not only in Texas where the shooting occurred, but around the country is get that support that you need. Yeah, we are expecting ABC to bring us a special report at 1130 this morning. So stay with us here on Denver 7. You can also get the latest updates on the DenverChannel.com and the Denver 7 Plus app. President Biden will also be signing an executive order today on police reform. Today is the two year anniversary of the death of George Floyd in Minneapolis. The order would require federal law enforcement to review and revise policies on use of force. It would also encourage limits on chokeholds and no knock warrants and cut back on the transfer of military equipment to police. Shanine McLean, the mother of Elijah McLean, will be at the White House today for the signing. Elijah died after he was arrested by Aurora police in 2019 and injected with ketamine. Well, a trip to the Western Conference Finals is on the line for the Avs tonight. They host the Blues in Game Four at Ball, Game Five, I should say, at Ball Arena. If the Avs win, they would advance to the Conference Finals for the first time in four years. Game starts at six, and we'll have live reports starting on Denver Seven News at 4 p.m. Still ahead, the FDA is revealing why it delayed inspecting a baby formula plant. And a group in Denver is encouraging people to get green thumbs and start growing their own food.